Hello and welcome to today's virtual riding GoPro lesson. We are on Foxy and today we are going to be learning a little bit about Cavalettis. It's going to be our one of our lessons about jumping. We here at CTR do not typically teach jumping. However, for the sake of virtual programming and expanding our knowledge about horseback riding, we thought it would be fun to go over jumping in one of our lessons. Now, while you're warming up your seat, you're sitting up tall, you're rocking your hips, we're gonna go a little bit over different kinds of jumping, what jumping looks like, and then we're gonna practice it at the end. So, jumping is not just something that happens in an arena, over poles. Jumping happens in many, many disciplines. So for example, you could be disciplined in stadium jumping, or you could be disciplined in hunter jumper style of jumping, or maybe you do eventing where you have jumping, but then you also have cross country where you are jumping firm nature objects or random objects. They can be a variety of themes, but you're out in the woods or you're out in a field and you're doing it at full speed ahead. Maybe you do, um, if I can think of it, the jumping, that's a part of racing, steeplechase jumping, there we go. <laughs> Maybe you do steeplechase jumping where it's a short racetrack, you are racing a whole bunch of horses while you do it, but you're in an enclosed environment but still outside. Maybe you do fox hunting and you are in a group and you have dogs all around you while you're jumping hedges. Jumping happens in many, many, many environments. Now, people often will say, people who believe horseback riding isn't a sport will often say that the horse does all the work in jumping. While the horse may do a lot of the muscle work of jumping, if you are not a good jumper, if you have not trained how to jump on a horse, if you do not have the proper muscles to balance yourself, to push, to land, to collect, your horse might do the work, but you are not gonna go with your horse over that jump. <laughs> you will get left behind, you will be ahead of the movement, you'll fall off, you'll lose your balance, you'll get jumped out of the saddle. Those are all different phrases to talk about things that could go wrong when jumping. So we have talked about two point and jumping position over poles. So we're gonna talk about how it's a little bit different when you're jumping. So if we were to go over these poles right now to my left, and you can do two point with me. We have learned that we go up into two point as our horse steps over the first pole, so now. And then we sit back down after they step over the last pole, now. So that's how we've learned to do two point. Now if I turn to these cavalettis in the middle, I'm not gonna go over one right now, we're gonna walk by it. You can see that the pole is off the ground, but that I have set up these blue and green pole, not poles, sorry, cones, to help us with our timing for two point. So when we are looking at a jump, I'm gonna hold my reins over my elbow real quick, not to drop them, but Foxy's just gonna walk around. When we're going over a jump, if this arm is the ground and this arm is the pole, we jump a parabola. So that's a fancy word in math world. Hopefully we can go back to some of the things we learned in high school or college. So that means that we jump this shape, okay? So however high the jump is determines when we take off to jump and when we land the jump. So if it's a really small jump, we only jump this. If it's a really big jump, we have to jump all of this. So timing for a jump is very important. If you take off too close to the jump, you'll knock it over. If you take off too far away from the jump, you're putting in too much effort and your horse could knock it with their back feet. So we start to go up into two point, right at the beginning of that parabola, and we land at the end of it. We have to hold ourselves in the air, balanced that entire time in between. It's very fast, but if it's wrong, that's where we end up with problems. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice just a little bit of the posting trot to warm up. We're gonna go over these little cavalettis and as we're posting, I'm gonna talk to you why we work with cavalettis and not jumps right now. So we're gonna ask for the trot. We're gonna get our diagonal. 
up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So keep posting. The reason we work on Cavalettis is to help our horse work on their footwork, to help us work on timing, to help you and your horse become a partner over those poles. This is teamwork together. To help your horse and yourself work on problem solving, critical thinking, reaction time, and muscle, of course. Let's change direction down here. So while you're posting, can you bring your left hand towards your hip? Point your horse's nose where you want him to go. And once we get back on the wall, we're gonna sit twice to change our diagonal. So up, down, up, down, up, down. Now we're balanced again. So Cavaletti's, our horse isn't technically jumping. It's too small for our horse to jump. They just step over it and give you some high knees. But it's a good introduction to having that lateral movement happening with vertical movement and maintaining balance over your horse. So we're gonna turn. When we get next to the green cone, you're gonna go up into two point. And the blue cone, you're going to go down. So it's very brief. It's up, down. That's it. Very brief. Your horse has to pick up their feet. You have to make sure that that whole time you're keeping your heels down, your belly button towards your spine. You're looking up. Your horse is going straight. There's a lot to think about. Ready? And up, down. And back to posting. We're going to do that figure eight one more time. So if your horse isn't straight, they could knock over the jump, they could swerve, they could refuse. All of those things could potentially cause you to fall off. And that's just the horse. The more energy you have, the easier it's going to be for your horse to get over it. If you go slow thinking it's going to be safer, you're much have a much higher chance of your horse doing a bunny hop. And if they do a bunny hop, their little like rear launch that they do over the jump, you have very high chances of not staying on. So it takes some courage to start doing jumping. I just realized I'm on the wrong diagonal, so I'm gonna switch my diagonal because I want a balanced horse. We'll do this last one up here. So energy in the posting trot. It's like we're doing a little jump course. Ready, up, down, back to posting right away. And we'll walk, so lean back. Good girl, Foxy. So we'll talk a little more about jumping. Maybe we'll try a mini Cavaletti jump course. Um, I don't know if Foxy here can Actually jump or not, we haven't tried jumping before, but <laughs> she's very happy to pick her knees up a little bit higher, get her belly engaged, think about what she's doing. Horses love having a mental challenge as much as some of us do, those of us who love riddles and puzzles and math. But for those of us who aren't into that, the thrill of jumping is still awesome. You can now move on to the next segment in this week's virtual programming.